Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and things are getting wild and so I'm going to jump into it. It is like, there's I'm so overwhelmed with things going on out there. It's like, wow. Okay, before I get going, I want to show you that Glint that you know is my one of my sponsors and they, they you can open Glint accounts and you can buy gold in your Glint account and they issue you a, a debit master card where you can actually spend your gold. Well, this is not going on in the United States. It's going on in um, in England, is my understanding. But they are doing like a crowdfunding where they're raising um, money. And they, there's actually a website. You can't do it in the U.S. And, and I'm not in any way involved in this from a financial standpoint other than them being a sponsor. But uh, you can go to this website. It's called seedrs.com. And they're doing some, I don't even have a good understanding of it. They're doing some kind of crowdfunding um, on this website so you can go check that out and there so I think you can actually buy shares there now check this out this is a first red flags are going up going up for me big time here this thing this thing is interesting all right this is a credify I looked it up a credify is a company out of Singapore okay who has filed a motion in an amicus brief in support of the SEC in the Ripple case. Look at what uh, Jeremy Hogan says. He says, if I were Ripple's lawyer, I'd ask for an additional five pages to my last brief in order to address this amicus brief and then just ignore it and, and I got five more pages for argument. All right, now this is interesting because of one thing that is in this, folks. I want to draw your attention to this solutions. This is uh, on page nine. Listen to what it says. A lot solutions allow for ripple and ether. Now here's the first thing that went off in my mind when I saw this, this almost call me crazy. It almost looks like some of these people involved in ETH gate said, Hey, we'll do let's get so-and-so to do an amicus brief out of Singapore and, um, because they got a problem, folks. They got a big problem. That they're worried about ETH being called a security now because of ETHgate, right? So you do an amicus brief that look in support of the SEC and you put this in it. Allow for Ripple, because I've told you on this channel before, you I've always wondered if the plan from the SEC's perspective was always to declare XRP as security so it would be for accredited investors only. But here this would change the game right here. They say solutions allow for Ripple and ETH holders to be grandfathered into compliance. Given that XRP is a security, the downstream effects must be considered. Although SEC was overwhelmed by the 2017 crypto wave, giving them leave to take more time than would normally be acceptable to bring their 2020 suit against XRP. Investors in XRP token are likewise innocent from liability and should not be punished for failing to anticipate an event that even the SEC could not. Ripple, the company should be made to compensate early investors for their transgressions. But at the same time, it is also not in the best interest of these investors to so destroy Ripple and XRP with a draconian punishment that the underlying utility as well as uh, investors' capital are destroyed. Unique circumstances should lead to unique solutions. And so in this case, the SEC should settle with Ripple, allowing the token to continue to be traded be deemed a security after the fact and sold via 144 exemption. You could go back and try to apply Reg D506C requiring investors to be accredited, but this would most likely be too cumbersome and would unfairly hurt non-accredited investors holding XRP, given that it has been around for years and the initial holding period for a Reg D fund raises one year. These investors should be grandfathered in and the sale should be subject to a special exemption after the fact that it minimizes industry disruption, this same analysis should be applied to Ethereum. Folks, this almost, unless I'm reading this wrong, this almost feels like an SEC life raft. Almost. 
Do you remember this from Stefan Huber back in July 29, 2022? SEC and NASAA agree credited investors should have at least $10 million in assets. I'm just throwing out a what if here, folks. What if the SEC's plan all along was to call all of this stuff securities? But they grandfather, <laughs> and that's what all these lawsuits and all these enforcement actions were for. And then all of a sudden, XRP investors and ETH investors got, quote, grandfathered, if they could show when they bought things or whatever, were grandfathered so that they were considered accredited investors and weren't subject to this. And then from then on, all this stuff, securities. Is that what I'm reading? I, I'm not an attorney, folks, but it's fascinating. Now, just in Sam Bankman Freed, sinks, he seeks up to $9.4 billion to rescue FTX, Reuters reports. Here, FTX restarted withdrawal and large sums are being taken out from the troubled exchange. Then there was this I saw from Larry Cermak. The withdrawals from FTX seem really weird. Some of them actually go to Binance depo deposit addresses, and some of them appear to be fresh wallets, which could indicate a consolidation. Some pretty large processing as well. Then you, when you go down here, this guy says, account that managed to get six figures out of FTX on the Solana network seems to be a Twitter account with 100 followers, including Sam Bankman Freed, leading credence to the theory that Sam is ensuring withdrawals for privileged people as we speak. Whoa. And then Egreg Crypto, after all that big dump that we had yesterday, I just wanted to show you the, I love all the, the phrases he comes up with having to do with these charts. The XRP floor of iron. I'm right now watching uh, the, uh, Game of Thrones sequel or whatever they call it, House of Dragon or House of Dragons. I don't even remember. I'm behind an episode or two, by the way. Need to watch that today. But anyway, the XRP floor of iron, like the Iron Throne. John Deaton, I love the XRP community. Some of you may recall on Tuesday without knowing, I said, someone check Gary. I thought he did know, but he, I guess he didn't. Someone check Gary Gensler's calendar because I bet at SBF. Uh, met with him cons considering the SBF gave the party, gave to the gave money to the party. Digital asset investor posted the meeting within minutes, and Andrew Ross Sorkin asked the question. True story, folks. We kind of taunted CNBC a little bit this morning, and they did to their credit. Increasingly, this is a library increasingly looking like that that while the sec had a team of staff working to crush us a tiny actor and one of the actual honest ones ftx was stealing billions and gary gensler was taking the time to personally meet with them it's all just so rotten can't disagree majority of the ftx legal team quit <laughs> there's so many little things i just need to touch to get through this video folk i'm not going to play this because it's going to go over too long but XRP Darren had put this out, raised $32 billion. They're expecting their stakes in FTX to be wor worthless. The investors, BlackRock, Temasek, SoftBank, Sequoia, also celebrities, Shaq, Kevin O'Leary, Stephen Curry, Tom Brady. Brutal. Michael Arrington tweeted this simpler times. That's Michael Arrington. That's Sam Bankman Freed. That is Justin Sun. That's CZ Binance. I'm not sure who these three are. Yeah, simpler times. Sam Bankman Freed's Alme Almeida Research website has been taken down. And then this, I also won't play, but this is him basically in front of Congress saying, t talking about all the risks that are involved. Well, it's 42 seconds. Listen, he's describing exactly what he went on to do. Last thing that I'll say is if you look at what precipitated some of the 2008 financial crisis, you saw a number of bilateral, bespoke, non-reported uh, transactions happening between financial counterparties, which then got repackaged and re-leveraged again and again and again, such that no one knew how much risk was in that system until it all fell apart. If you compare that to what happens on FTX or other major cryptocurrency venues today, there is complete transparency about the full open interest. There is Pretty nauseating, huh? Something, a point I forgot to mention to you about this back here. Remember when we were talking about this amicus brief? 
allow for Ripple and ETH holders to be grandfathered into compliance. There's one thought that I want you I don't want you to forget on this. Allow for Ripple and ETH holders to be grandfathered into compliance. Now, how would you even do that? The only re- the only way that you could do that is if there was some kind of an offer almost like an XRP buyback. Some kind of an offer where the SEC said, "Look, we're going to grandfather you in um we'll come in now and or go if you go and and turn it and sell it on to so and so almost sounds like an xrp i think somebody in here said it the buyback theory right there remember all the xrp buyback theory remember jimmy valley and everybody how everybody thought he was so crazy i didn't think he was crazy Moving along. Now, in this whole FTX thing, there's one thing that I think that everybody needs to be paying attention to. I went and and recorded this. FTX was used to short a lot of things. And I was watching one of BitBoy's videos this morning where he was he was going line by line. He w- and I I'm not saying I know it to be true. I'm just saying this is what he said. He said that FTX was used to take down Luna, to take down um Celsius, those tokens, that it was used for that, to take down those tokens. This could all be, and folks, there are things floating around that, and it's coming here in this video, there are things being floated that the government was involved with FTX for the purpose of creating some of these emergency situations in order to be able to come in and regulate crypto, folks. How about them apples? So here you have, and I've been su- I've been suspicious of all these characters for a long time, of trying to different characters trying to short XRP. This video right here is Sam B- Bankman Fried showing you one of his the things you can do on his platform shorting different things. Watch. This is a future on uh, an index of nine different altcoins. You see XRP right there. And if you if you look at those, somebody did a screenshot right here. If you look at those, all of those from what B, he's got BNB, you can sh- and he's bragging about how you can short them. All of these look like Tron, uh, Litecoin, XRP, BNB. All of these look like things that you would be able to short on his platform. But it's not his token. I didn't see his token. Now I'm not saying you couldn't short it. Maybe you could, but I didn't see it in that list. All right, now, um, this is something people don't need to forget in the midst of all this. Caitlin Long, signal, not noise. Well, of course, Elon Musk filed paperwork to get Twitter into payments business, just as predicted. Banks get ready to be disintermediated. Amid all the drama, this is the real news. And she's got a hashtag lightning network, which has never worked. You know what has worked? Did you know, for those of you that were around when I was, there was an XRP tip bot that worked flawlessly two or three years ago on Twitter. We say wind created it. Then he discon. Uh, I think it still is in existence, but it's in different form or something. But he had stopped fooling with it for a while or something to go work on the sum wallet. Now check this out. Before Gary Gensler went on CNBC, he tweeted that out. Tom Emmer today, folks. This is what you call over the target. Interesting, Gary Gensler runs into the media while reports to my office allege he was helping Sam Bankman Fried and FTX work on legal loopholes to obtain a regulatory monopoly. We're looking into this. Well, to Tom Emmer, I would say this. Well, why wouldn't they look for it? Why wouldn't Gary Gensler and Sam Bankman Fried look for a regulatory monopoly when the previous SEC head, with the help of Gary Gensler, got away with the ETHgate? monopoly attempt because none of you guys asked them to none of you guys hold them in front of congress all you did is threaten that there's going to be a new whatever none of you have called publicly for there to be an investigation of those conflicts of interest so why wouldn't they continue to do nefarious things they're not being held accountable by any of you congressmen words tweets that's nothing Jake Travinsky retweeted his tweet and says, For many months in D.C., an argument made by those pushing crypto spot market legislation was that FTX might close a deal with the SEC 
setting harmful precedent for everyone else. So we should take what we can get, if not, per, if not perfect. Thank you, Tom Emmer, for looking into this. Well, Jake Trevinsky, I got a question for you. If that was being said behind the scenes, then why weren't you sounding the alarm? You know what the problem is, is all of these people are in that DC bubble. And they don't see things through a prism of right and wrong. They see thing. They see all of these things as tactics and and DC tactics and all this stuff. You and I don't live in that world. We live in a world of right and wrong. They live in lawyer land. John Deaton says retweeted Tom Emmer's thing. He says Congress needs to. This is act, this is the kind of action Jake Travinsky should have been doing. Congress needs to subpoena the notes from the meetings of. Sam Bankman, Fried, and FTX, Empower, and others need to send FOIA requests for all meetings, etc. If SFB, if SBF wants to help crypto, he will share all emails and communications with U.S. regulators. The exchanges need to coordinate. This is a watershed moment. He's right. All right. Now, I want to show all of you something because many of you don't know this. But everything that you're watching be allowed with Gary Gensler at the SEC now, he's already done at the CFTC. Gary left Goldman Sachs with a guy, he was there with a guy named John Corzon. And John Corzon literally was running MF Global because of Gary Gensler. And then he went on to lose, he went on to lose like some crazy amount of money, $100 billion. Similar situation to this FTX thing. And do you know what happened? Well, Gary was at the CFTC and presided over the whole thing. Not only did they not hold John Corzine accountable in any kind of real way, but Gary was never held accountable. Listen to this little dialogue. If a person. And by the way, this is back when we had a Congress that would at least call these people out publicly and say, who's doing the investigation of this? We don't even have that now. If a person, uh, you know, through doing this other, uh, essentially can steal hundreds of billions of dollars, and, and there is no penalty except for some civil penalty, uh, that's a real problem. Senator, if I can add, my good general counsel I was able to tell me the words. In the Commodities and Exchange Act, it does say if, if an individual knowingly and willfully knowingly and willfully violates the Commodities Exchange Act, that's a criminal violation and for you, the individual. And we have a history of prosecuting those kind of things. It, it's happened. Well, that, that's not a history. Okay. And again, this is a real problem. And this is why uh, the American people are losing faith in their institutions. Now, tell me about you all in the sense that one of the concerns I have, you can be so close to these things that, that you, know, you almost don't really realize uh, when things are going on. What is your protocol for investigating yourself in this process? Uh, are your IGs involved now or what, what's going on? See, Tom Emmer hasn't even asked that. Um, I, I, we will do a, um, a lessons learned review. Um, so will you have an IG investigation regarding this? I, I'm, I'm not sure what they would... A lessons learned review. <laughs> investigate. Um, well, uh, we've had, we had the meltdown in 08, you know, lots of stuff going on. We passed Dodd-Frank, tremendous increase in regulation. This stuff consider, you know, continues to go on. I guess I would like to know and I think the American people would, you know, to make sure that the individuals in your agency are actually doing the job that we entrust them to do. Well, that, that's certainly And, and it's hard to self-regulate yourself. You said yourself a while ago that you're the policeman, and I agree with that. Oh, the cop on the beat? It Look, Congressman, unfortunately, Gary gets a promotion and stuff. It's just, a, at a minimum, a sideways movement. He got rewarded for his behavior at the CFTC with the SEC. And I have a bad feeling this time he'll be rewarded with the Treasury job for doing all of this mess this time. It's shameful what's happened to this country. Now, this, Ron Hammond's another great example of people who have been in the bubble too long. You couldn't possibly be this milk toast about this Sam Bank Bankman-Fried thing. Um, 
unless you've been in D.C. too long. But, in fact, I'm not it – just it's kind of irritating to me to even read this when these pe- – the fact that there's no outrage by these people kind of makes me sick. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and ask your friends and family, where is the outrage? Where's the outrage in the United States of America? Maybe I'm just an old man now, but what has happened to this country?